Complete the theorem. The line segments joining the midpoints of two triangles. Okay, so let's draw a triangle. And then they said the line segment that joins the midpoints of the two sides. Okay, so if this is the first side over here, let's put the midpoint over there. And then if this is the next side, let's put the mid, or let's put midpoint like that. And let's put this one's midpoint over there. So when, when these are midpoints, it means that this length is the same as this length. And then this length is the same as this length. Now they said the line segment that joins those two. Okay, there. They say, okay, now you need to know from grade 10, this is, well, this is grade 10, midpoint theorem. The midpoint theorem tells us that if you have a triangle and if you take the midpoint and the midpoint of the other side, and if you connect them, then automatically this line becomes automatically parallel to this one. It just happens. You can try to draw this out a hundred times on your page. It just happens. It's amazing. And another thing is that this length, will be exactly half the length of that one. How awesome is that? So it says the line segment joining the midpoints of two triangles of a triangle is, now we're just going to say parallel, or let's rather say, um, yeah, we can say parallel to the third side. This is the third side. And it is half the length of the third side. Okay, perfect. So that's the midpoint theorem. This question over here says, A, B, C, D is a rhombus with diagonal A, C has a length of 16. Okay, so this length over here is 16. And D, B, the other diagonal, is 30. Okay, now first question says, calculate the length of B, C. Calculate the length of B, C. Okay, so B, C is over here. Right, let's go talk about a rhombus quickly, just so we can refresh our memory. So a rhombus has all four sides the same length. Whoa. All four sides are the same length. So that is the same as that, that is the same as that. So they all four have the same length, okay, if you didn't hear me the first time. Um, now, they've obviously got diagonals. The diagonals are not the same length. I mean, look how long that one is, and then look how short that one is. They're not the same. Another thing, the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees, okay? So bisect means that it cuts each other in half. So this length and this length is the same, and then these two are also the same as each other, okay? Those are the main properties of a rhombus. Okay, so check this out. If they want the length of BC, okay, they want this length of here, we know that these are all 90, 90, 90, 90. Then what it means is that I could make a triangle just over here, I could make a triangle. And it's a 90 degree triangle because we know that for a rhombus that's 90 degrees, right? That's just one of the properties. I'll show you how to get four marks now. Now I'm just quickly explaining. Now we also know that this entire length is 30. But that then means that this part's 15 and this part's 15. Because we said here that the diagonals cut each other in half. And if this whole part is 16, then it means that half of that is 8 and half of that is 8. So in this triangle, I can now use Pythagoras because I have this and I have this. And it's a right angle triangle, so I could find that. That's the idea, but now we've got to go write it down properly for four marks. So what did we say? Well, the first thing we said was that this was 90 degrees. So we can't just call that O because O could be this one, this one, this one, or this one. So what we instead do is we say B, O, C, B, O, C, or C, O, B, whatever you want to do. See, B, whoa, P, F, B, O, C. So now it's that angle over there. So we'll say angle B, O, C is 90 degrees. And that is just because of a property of a rhombus, because of the diagonal. So you can just say diags of rhombus, okay? The next thing, what did we say? Oh yes, we said that this length is the same as this length. So we said that BO is equal to OD, and that is also just diags of rhombus. And so therefore, BO is 15. 
The next thing we said was that AO is equal to OC, and that's also because of diags of rhombus. And so therefore, we said that OC is 8. And so now it's just a matter of doing Pythagoras. So we could then say that um, BC squared is going to be equal to um, OC squared plus OV squared, and that's just because of Pythagoras. And so BC squared is going to be equal to 8 squared plus 15 squared. And so BC squared would be 289. And then, of course, we square root. Whoops. We square root that. And that'll be 17. So the length of BC is 17 centimeters. This one says, calculate OF, the length of OF. If OF... Okay, is parallel to BC with F on BC. Okay, so they want this length over here if these are parallel. Okay, okay. so they're sort of getting at the midpoint theorem, and that's probably why they made us do this one over here, because check this out now. If we just look at that triangle, um, I'll show you now. If we just look at this triangle here, we can see that this is already 15 and this is already 15. So this is the midpoint, okay? And we know that these two lines are parallel. So you know earlier up here I said the following. I said that if we have a triangle where we have the midpoint, so the midpoint there and the midpoint there, then we said these lines are parallel. However, it works the other way as well. If we have one of the midpoints, only one of the midpoints, like we do over here. But if they tell us that these lines are automatically parallel, then we can say, therefore, these two must be the same. Okay? And we don't even have to say that those two are the same. All we know is that as long as we have two of the properties, so as long as we have that, because you see up here we had how many properties? We had midpoint plus midpoint, and from that we could say everything else. Here we've got midpoint, plus parallel, so now we could say everything else. So one of the things we could say is that this length is half this length. So that means this length is going to be half of this length. But we know this length. Why? Because we've just calculated this one as 17, but we know that the properties of a rhombus tell us that all lengths are the same. So now we have this length, so we can easily get that length as half. But obviously for three marks, we need to go and um, say it in the correct way. So the first thing I would say is let's go say that CD is um, 17, or CD is going to be the same as BC. And that's just because of the sides of rhombus. Okay, so therefore CD is also going to be 17 centimeters. Now we can say that OF is going to be half of CD. And that's just midpoint theorem, midpoint theorem, okay? Now, we can literally go and say, therefore, OF would be half of 17, which is 8.5 centimeters. And so we've got that. So just coming back to this midpoint theorem, as long as you have two things, so if you have the midpoints, then you can automatically say, these are parallel, and this length is half of that. But maybe they give you another scenario where they only give you one of the midpoints, but then they tell you these are parallel. Then from that, you could say these two must be the same. So they can give it to you in different ways, and as long as they give you two properties, you can fill in all the other properties. If your teacher over here uses the reasoning converse, some schools leave that out in grade 10, but then you can also use the word converse if your teacher does that, okay? This question over here says, determine the size of OBF, so angle OBF. So O, then go to B, and then go to F. O, O, B, F. Okay, so it's this angle over here. They wanna know what that angle is. And they're saying OFC is 64. So OFC is 64. 
Okay. Now, to be honest, I'm not even going to use the 64. I'm just going to look at this triangle over here once again. We have, if I just draw that triangle out, we've got a 90 degree triangle. We've got the lengths of all three sides, and we're just looking for this angle over here. So we can just use trigonometry. And you could, because we have all three sides, you could literally choose whatever you want. You could choose sin, you could choose cos, or you could choose tan, and you'd get the same answer for every single one of them. So this is B1. So, because opposite of that angle is this one, so this is the opposite. The longest one is the hypotenuse, and the other one would be the adjacent. So you can choose whatever you want. I'm going to go with sin. And so sin of the angle we are looking for, which is angle B1, is equal to the opposite, which is going to be 8, over the hypotenuse, which is going to be 17. And then to get the angle, I'm going to say shift on my calculator. So say shift. So just say shift on your calculator. And then um, sin, and then 8 over 17. And if you do that correctly, it should give you 28.07 degrees. If you did use the 64 and you used some parallel line kind of method, you would have gotten an answer for B1 as 32. Okay, slightly different answers. They haven't set the question up correctly. This probably isn't actually 64. They've set it up in a weird way. So yeah, if you use the sin or trigonometry method, you get that. But if you use the parallel method, you get 32. So yeah, I'll quickly show you this parallel method. Uh, we know that these lines are parallel, this one and this one, okay? And also this one, they're all parallel. So what that then means is that, can you see there is, let me use a highlighter. Can you see there's an F of here, right? And so it means that from the F, this angle, must be the same as this angle over here. So B1 and 2 together is 64 degrees. But another property of the rhomb rhombuses that we haven't spoken about uh, when I was showing you the properties is that the diagonals cut the angles in half. So this angle is always the same as this angle. Um, this angle is always going to be the same as this angle. So if these two together must add up to 64, but these two angles are exactly the same, then that means they would actually just both be 32 and 32. Okay, so that's the other answer if you did it that way. Okay, last one, determine the area of the rhombus. So to determine the area of this rhombus, um, it's actually gonna be quite simple. All you must realize is that we have four triangles. Can you see? And all four triangles are gonna be exactly the same. They're all going to have an 8 and a 15 and a 17, 8, 15, 17, 8, 15, 17, 8, 15, 17. So we're just going to go find one of the areas of the triangle and then just multiply that answer by 4. So if, for example, we look at this triangle here, we know that the area of a triangle, so the area of triangle BOC, is just going to be half base times height. So the base and the height must always be the ones next to the 90 degree. Okay, don't use the 17. So we're just going to say half 8 times 15, and that's going to end up giving us 60 centimeters squared. And then we're just going to times that by 4, um, for f because there's four of those triangles. So 4 times 60 will just be 240 centimeters squared.